Yeah, I've not done trance house four, so this is new to me. It's like the most pitiful template I've ever seen. Better or worse? <laughs> it was mostly flawless. My heart is racing. This is really important. It's kind of intimidating. I think we just put another coat of this stuff on there and slam it in. Oh. That board's rotten. Yeah, there's a problem. I hear a cherry picker. It's a heck of a cherry picker. That'll pull bag. it out. Oh, yep. that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the nut. <laughs> this is so awesome. Oh, that, that, that answers our that question right there. Yeah, yeah. That is it right problem. there. Yep. Well. <laughs> so I'm back at the boat. Today I'm going to get in there, look at the transom, what's left of it, get it sanded up, get it smoothed out because tomorrow Emily's going to come over and we're going to cut out that new piece and epoxy it in or fiberglass it in, I guess it is and then start to get this thing back together. So what I'll be working on is where this lips over, that needs to be smooth so the new piece can go in here all in one piece. Obviously down here, we'll clean some of this out so we can make that piece go all the way down to the bottom and then we'll start building a cardboard template. That way when we cut it, we've got exactly what we want. All this has to be ground out because we want that CUSA board to go in there and set flush so that the fiberglass has something to bite to. Yeah, Emily's in Dallas doing some modeling work and I'm gonna be here doing this dirty work. So here's the plan. With Emily not here, I'm gonna clean all this stuff up. I'm looking at my stringers here. Those may have to be cut back because I gotta get the board in here or do I just cut this piece out and redo it? I don't know, these are things I don't know. I'm gonna get started on this. That little oscillating saw that I borrowed from Matt, I just went and got it again. And I'm gonna trim this stuff up and get it to where we can start actually hitting it with the grinder and see what we end up with. As you guys know, I have no clue what I'm doing, but I can see what needs to be replaced. I've got the CUSA board, I've got the resin, and so let's just make this stuff up as we go. I did bring a respirator. For those of you that were concerned about that, you're exactly right. Forgot to wear it last time, but I have a respirator and I've got gloves, so nothing left to do but jump in here. It's actually pretty hot in Texas today. Not very excited about getting this fiberglass on me. Just makes it even more itchy and gross and all that stuff. That's getting us down to where we can work. But to continue chipping all this stuff out, I'm gonna cut this out as well. That's more of the structure there. Go all the way down here, cut into here, and replace all that. So my tip will look like this, this, and then this. Don't know if I should be cutting this out or not, but you can see that board's not gonna wanna go between here and here. So do I cut the stringers back? Because that'll tell me if they're good, or do I cut this and reglass it? I don't know. Progress is going to continue. You know what, it happened yesterday without me, so I guess I'm not really that vital. <laughs> I uh, had a job in Dallas yesterday and got home and Aaron reported that he had good progress yesterday and I'm excited to be present for this progress today. Let's freaking go. Aaron's eating lunch, so he's gonna do that. And then we shall begin work on this old hunk, hunk a hunk of burning fiberglass. <laughs> Yesterday I made some progress. I trimmed this up to where you can slide the new CUSA board in. Trimmed around here. I went down on these corners over here and I cut all the way down to the bottom of the hole. You see there. Now I've got the task of getting all this roughness off here, like all that wood that's left. And I ground a lot off yesterday, but I ended up running out of batteries. So went home, charged some stuff, came back, and we're gonna see if we can finish this up. <laughs>
enough of that for a minute. Emily got me a little piece of that kusa. This is an inch and a half thick. That's what we're going to be replacing this with because it had two three quarter inch pieces of plywood on it. So what I was just doing is I wanted to cut these stringers back a little bit because to get this board in here, it's going to have to slant and go in. So I cut those back just so I can see what we're working with. We've actually got good wood on that. So with this sample piece, I've just been cutting it back to where that's going to go all the way in there. I want it to go up underneath this ledge right here, like it's doing right now. So you can see that's going to give us the thickness that we need. Yeah, so I've just been using this to check to make sure we've got it right. And down here on the bottom, I cut it back based on this kusa. It's cut back as far as I need it to go. Now I've not done transoms before, so this is new to me, or maybe it's just this type of boat, but it's clear to me that they didn't run their boards all the way down flush with the bottom, because there's just like wavy fiberglass up in there. It's gonna be really hard to grind all out so that I can get this board to go down flush and, and mate with the bottom of the boat. But we're just gonna have to keep grinding. We're hoping to have the transom, at least the first piece cut today, but it's just, it's gonna take how long it takes. So we're gonna keep working. We'll keep showing you bits of it, and that's where we are. So I'm tired of running that little machine, so I'm going to pull these motor mounts out and see how rotted the wood is under it. That way I know on the bottom down here I've got a little bit of rot, nothing bad, the top is good, and by hitting it with a hammer I can't really tell because it looks like they laid this fiberglass kind of loose. It may not be the case, it may be that they're actually rotted, but I'm feeling like they just didn't do a great job of fiberglassing it in. So I'll pull this out and I'll be able to see in here. One thing I did buy was penetrating epoxy resin maybe. I was kind of hoping if these are in decent shape, I can cut with a hole saw some holes in the top of it, pour that stuff in it, and let it really sink into these things, and uh, that would make it work instead of having to replace it all, but we'll see. Well, the bolts didn't come out like they're rotted. It looks pretty solid. Well, the wood's definitely not completely gone from under them. You know, like this stuff back here just crumbled. I mean, that's some pretty hard stuff. So those bolts are just like yeah, they're wood, big wood screws. I don't know what, I call them lag bolts. I don't know uh, what they are, they're big wood bolts. That's wild. Obviously had some kind of thread locker, I don't know, something on there to keep the water out. That over there. This is, I think we got rock problems here. But you're right, it just sounds like airy fiberglass. It doesn't necessarily sound like, I don't know, weird. Yeah, and there is a hole right here, like a they put a piece of PVC pipe in there or something and fiberglass to them so that water can run from one side to the other. So that might be what we're hearing right there. As you go up a little bit and it gets hard. Mm-hmm. So if we do have a problem on this side, it sounds like it's from like right here back on the bottom of this. So that's not bad. I don't even think I need to pull this one out right now. Okay, Aaron just got all of this old fiberglass cut out of here. So now it's just straight where we can install the kusa right against it. Before it had a big lip and a ledge that we were worried about it getting up close to the wood and getting a good seal. So Aaron just sawed off all that fiberglass up there. So that looks really good. Nicely done, sir. Thank you. I think. <laughs> it's really good. My brain's numb. It's not working. It's vibrating so much. <laughs> it looks to me like you did awesome. Good job. It's about time for you to make a template. Mm. So I don't trust myself with that. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> Trace my line of like this line on the outside of the hole with my Sharpie and then cut it and then bring it in here and see how it falls and then cut my out drive hole. It's not going to be exact because it's smaller in here than it would be out there, I think. But it would be the start. It's going to be hard to get the start in here. Yeah. Let me cut that and see how that does on the inside. I feel like it's going to be smaller on the outside than it is the inside because there's like material between here and there. But this will at least give me a start, right? Yeah, it's pretty good. Out the bottom of the hole. It's looking pretty close at least. I can't make it go flush until I cut my center part for the dang old out drive, but it's looking close. And then we can just get our area right here. Ah, but I think Erin and I are about to call it a night. It's about time to go home and cook dinner and transfer footage and do nightly things. So we will see you guys in the new day, which will be Friday. See you tomorrow.
back again. This weather lately has been quite nasty. We've been getting a lot of thunderstorms. Well, my sweet little template that I was in the process of making got all wet last night. And so I have it drying on top of Garfield right now with some boards on it in hopes that it like dry sort of flat. While that happens though, I decided that I'm going to get in the engine compartment with this vacuum cleaner and clean out all of the wood debris and fiberglass debris and kind of get it cleaner in there so that we have a better workspace and also less junk. So that's what I'm getting ready to do. I'm pretty happy with that. It cleaned up nice and it's nice to see the lower part of the hole all cleaned off and instead of all of the fiberglass powder and stuff down there, we can see what we're working with. I'm gonna go check my template and see if it's dried out enough to play with. And we'll see if we can get this knocked out so we can actually cut some kusa. truly is. <laughs> it's like the most pitiful template I've ever seen. <laughs> it's something. Yeah. Thank you for that. That's every craftsman's favorite lunch, isn't it? <laughs> it's gotta be the secret to success. <laughs> Better or worse? <laughs> oh boy. It's gonna be an adventure. Yeah. Time to do some cutting. The hammer. Hey, so I had to cut the stringers back so that when we go to put that coos in, it'll come at an angle and then plop up against here. We still got a lot of cleaning up to do on all this, but we want to test fit our stuff first and just see where things are going to lay, make sure it's the way we want it. But for now, we're going to vacuum this stuff out, throw that coos in here, and see if it is even close to fitting. It's mostly flawless. Okay. He was taking the grinder down here and cleaning up the edges of the existing fiberglass and helping it fit. Yep. Wait, just a little bit more, but it's doing good. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've put in a good Sunday. We feel like we have the piece of kusa going in and fitting really nicely. It seems to fall in and out now, which is really what we want once we have that epoxy yeah. or glue down to glue it yeah, on. Once right? the resin's in there, we want to be able to move pretty quickly. And it's sitting pretty well flush. I've got about a quarter inch gap right where the um, out drive comes through. Um, I think maybe the back of the boat is actually warped a little bit because it's flat everywhere else. So we'll get some clamps on that and should be fine. We will resume work in the morning. We'll see y'all then. And we are back. 
It is a new day and we are going to bang some work out today. Erin is already like running around like a crazy person. I'm like, I want to be filming this, but we didn't shoot an intro yet. <laughs> Tell them what you're doing right now. I'm shooting an intro right now. <laughs> but what I was doing before she interrupted me, <laughs> I'm building braces in there. So once we get the kusa up against there and we get ready to put the glue on it, I want to make sure there's plenty of braces to wedge it up against that transom. Oh, we don't get any air gaps or anything like that. We can use clamps on some of it, but most of it's going to have to be boards just wedged in there to hold it in place. So I'm getting that prepped, getting a dry run done, and then we'll start laying glue down, I guess. Heck yes. Liquid nails. That's right. <laughs> We're liquid nails it in. No. Okay, I'm gonna film him doing this and I might even put it on the tripod and help him. But, you know, I, I understand when it's time for me to just stay out of the way and document it for y'all. Right now he's on a roll, so I'm gonna stay out of his way and film him. Go team, yeah, let's do this. Oh, spam. Your hammer, there it is. Oh. That board's rotten. Good to know. Hey, while y'all are at it, you should go buy some merch. Aaron's wearing his Flying Sparks hat today. And uh, we were trying to be really good about selling merch for a handful of episodes and then we just kind of forget. We just get going and forget. But it really makes a difference when you guys buy merch. And we're about to do another big order of new apparel, like less words, more work, like a bunch of fun stuff. So yeah, y'all better buy what we have now because we are not going to restock that. Like Garfield shirts, Roxy shirts, Zen shirts. We're gonna buy new stuff and then y'all can get stoked about that. But yeah, go grab merch right now because it makes a huge difference for us and I think it makes you happy when you toss one of our shirts on, you know? Okay. This freaking wire. I like those little pieces between the stringer and the kusa. Yeah. That's pretty good. Look, that one already got loose because I've pushed so much on these. That's awesome. Jealous. Get it, buddy. This is looking good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, he's got all of his pieces in place that he wants. That looks real good. Yeah, that's gonna work. Looks good to me. You gonna number them so you know where they go? Yeah, I probably should. <laughs> and we gotta put clamps around this, but we have C-clamps for that, so. Yep. I'm happy with it. it looks awesome. <laughs> Heck yeah, clamping time. Matt had all these big awesome clamps, so we're gonna put them to use. Okay, let's start with the silvers. They seem to reach out further. Is the clampage gonna go to the inside to you or uh, outside to me? Probably you? outside. I kinda wanna have the dang part like not on the white. Well, we can put a board in there if you want. There's you know, lots the, of like, scraps of wood. Okay. Yeah, cause I would love to like protect the board. Okay, clampage has begun. Okay, that's good. Okay. Let's get the other one, the yeah, silver one. Yeah, super sturdy. Yep. Okay, let me get another piece of wood. Yeah? Yep, happy in here. Okay. Good? Yep. <laughs> More? Yep. Okay, note to self, situate my wood differently. You can use the same board on multiple clamps. Exactly. Well, I was imagining going down the channel of the transom hole. Okay, here we go. 10 years later. Okay, we have clampage. Okay. Okay. Get one down here. Okay, you're good. Now let's get another one right here. Where now? Start working on the sides. I'm thinking I'll go all the way down the side with this. Yep. To where I have multiple clamping locations. Yep. Happy? Yep. This one I'm gonna need a board inside here. You have one or? No, I need one. Right, back it out a little bit. Keep going? A little bit, right there. Tighten her down? Yep. Bueno? Yeah, you're good. A dirt side? Just right here. Okay. Right about there? Yeah, let me get my clamp repositioned. There, that'll work. Okay. Okay. So I only have one more clamp. Yep, I've got some in the truck. Okay. Okay, I need a board for this one. All right, go down some. 
You want it up there? Okay. That's going to require me to have a board. All right, that's our clampage. I feel like I need one more board up here. That's some pretty impressive clampage, if you ask me. <laughs> Overkill? Is that what you I meant to say? I mean, two, four, six, eight, nine clamps. Okay, we've been doing a fun experiment. Aaron mixed up some of our compound. Is it enamel? It's resin. Okay, resin, yeah. it's not epoxy. I was saying yeah. all the wrong things. Yeah. It's a resin and I mixed it up with some silica. Powder. This stuff right here, it makes it thick so it doesn't all just run off of it. And did a test run and after about 20 minutes, it's starting to set up. So I know the stuff's gonna work. Got some little mat. This is gonna go in between there, help take up some of those cracks. We're gonna blast this in, put the resin on it. And then on the CUSA board, we'll put that thickened resin on here, then sandwich everything together and put clamps back on it and adios. Come back and check it tomorrow. We'll let it sit. Yeah, it's really cool because we wanted to test how long we would have with this product and how long it stayed movable. And it bonded within about 10 minutes. Yeah, right? about I 10 mean, minutes where it was thin. Aaron did art. It's really fun to look at this. It's been about 20 now and it's still kind of tacky, but it's hardened. I don't know if y'all can tell, but that's pretty cool. It's fun to play with this stuff and see. That's like, oh, I could pull it off now. So it stays. It takes 24 hours to yeah. set where you can't pull it apart. So it's pretty cool. So we can have movement and get our CUSA set without it totally yep. tightening down and being like, oh no, we didn't Yeah, that was the clamps. idea. That's why we tested some areas to see if it takes us longer than we want it to, is it still gonna squeeze out and get contact on everything? And it looks like it is, so. I say we just get started, hope for the best, see what happens. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna mix up 20 ounces of this and then thicken it. And once we get that thickened up, we'll just set that to the side. We're gonna put hardener in it second. I know that's kind of debatable, but I've watched plenty of YouTube videos and guys said, mix it well and it'll be all right. Then we're gonna go in, we're gonna mix up some soupy stuff and put these two layers of mat in between there, get those super wetted out. And then we'll put the thickened stuff on the kusa, slam it in there and start putting our clamps back in. So for now I'm gonna thicken this up. Right, right there. See what that looks like. Mm -hmm. All right, hardener going in. There we go. interesting how the color changes as it develops. Yeah, that's very interesting. I don't understand what's going on there. <laughs> Chemistry. Mm -hmm. I'm sure develops isn't the proper terminology. <laughs> <laughs> as it marinates. <laughs> yeah, that's better. More technical. Uh, in the kitchen at least. Mm-hmm. I don't think we need that thickened stuff. This is really come together nice. Really good. I think we just put another coat of this stuff on there and slam it in. Yeah, it is pretty cool. It changes colors. It is. So you felt like with the second batch, we didn't need the silica because the texture and consistency Yeah, it's, fine. it's just pretty thick and good. It's sticking to the handle. <laughs> Mm. 
That is looking so good. It is real soupy. So that will be our adhesive between the, yep. the kusa. So should I go grab the kusa? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now go ahead and give me the thickened stuff. All right. And I didn't bring my spatulas up in here, did I? Okay. Yeah. You know, I just told Aaron my heart is racing. He said, "What? I'm from running back and forth? Because I've been going up and down and up and down." He's, he said, "From going back and forth." I said, "No, I think because this is really important. It's kind of intimidating." Thank you. Mm -hmm. I could have used to be a little bit thicker. So you put the hardener in there? Yeah. Cool. I missed that. So. Oh, sorry. He did put hardener in, folks. I, I just did. didn't catch it on camera. <laughs> I was probably grabbing the spatulas or something. Mm -hmm. I just went and grabbed him the silica to make it thicker so that it goes on more like he wants it to. So that'll be good. Yeah, that's thicker. Yeah. It's all going to squeeze out if we did it right. So Yeah, that's true. I just want to make sure there's plenty of resin in there. All right, here we go. Oh, beautiful, babe. Sweet. Heck yeah. Your hammer's right back there. Yep. This is awesome, dude. To start on clamps? Yeah, let's get going on that. Okay. I need to remember I'm not in like a mad dash. Yeah, you're good. I'm like, like I'm on the clock, you know? Yeah. Oh, nice squeezage. Yeah. Lots of juice running out. <laughs> Half a crank. Oh. Okay. I feel like these boards are going to be glued to the outside of the boat. Oh, well, they could be. Does this one need a board on the inside? Yes. She good there? Yep. Yep, that's doing good. It's got about a half a crank left. Beautiful. Yep. <laughs> I'll go with the blues since they're more set up. Yep. Is this down here? Right about there. Okay. Yeah? Okay, now let's get the bottom ones. Okay. This must be where I had the orange guys. That's fine. It's going to crunch, let it crunch. Tighten it more? Yeah. Okay. Because it's glued now, whatever's crunching, I don't care. Kind of feels like the crunches could be good to stable it up a little bit. Yep. This is awesome, dude. Yeah. Ah, amazing. All right. You're happy with it? I guess so, yeah. It's all secured in here. It looks awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Guys, this is so huge. It's glued in there. It's in. It's got all these boards holding tension on it. It's got the clamps on it. And I think that's a wrap for us. We're gonna stop here because when I was cutting those stringers back, yeah, some of the boards are rotten. So I need to replace the stringers. I don't see a reason to fiberglass everything in until the stringers are done. And I can't do that now because we're gonna engine swap this. So we don't know where the motor mounts are gonna be just yet. Once we figure that out, we'll build the stringers and we'll get this glassed in. But for now, hey, she's got a new transom and it's solid. So awesome. We appreciate y'all being here so much. If you haven't subscribed, please do that and like and comment. It makes a huge difference for us. So we love y'all and we will see you on the next episode.